computational homography. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll try to you know keep this short. Okay, since we have already kind of gone through the steps before. Okay, so as I keep writing, I think you know you'll be able to figure out what I'm what I'm saying. Right. But then the main thing is that when I say rotational homography, what I really mean is that uh, you know unlike the earlier case where we allowed this camera to also translate, right? We will not translate it. So, so you know, it's equal to saying that wherever the camera is, it can rotate about its center, but then it should not move. Okay, that's why we call it a rotational homography. Only, only, only a rotational motion is allowed. It can be, it can be, you know, a 3D rotation, right? It can go through R X, R Y, R Z, but it should not translate. Okay, the camera is not allowed to translate. Okay, which is why this is a special case where uh, where we are looking at the case when the camera is allowed only to only to say rotate. Okay, so that's why it's called a rotational. Homography. So, if you again uh, go back to the same figure and all, right? So, the, I mean, uh, the you see, nice thing about this one is that it does not impose a constraint that your scene should be a planar scene. Okay, that is a nice thing about this. But then it'll also have its own drawbacks. Okay, what what those things are, we'll see along the way. So, the so the way we'll we'll look at it is the same thing, right? Uh, there's a you know, assume that assume that there's a point P in the world, but no longer do we have to assume that P has to lie lie on some plane and so on. Or the scene should be a planar scene on which P is sitting. Okay, so you have some point P, and then it has a coordinate whatever a capital X1, Y1, Z1 with respect to the camera's first uh, first position, and then you kind of rotate the camera, and then you have you know another set of coordinates, and then you want to be able to relate the uh, right images that you get from the first view with respect to the second. Same problem, right? Whatever we did. So uh, so so all these notations and all that right, I won't explain again. Since we have already seen them before, okay. So as I keep writing, I mean, I know hopefully, right, you will just be able to follow what I'm saying. So you have like Z1, okay, which is uh, you know, which is uh, the Z coordinate of the point, and then we have X1, Y1, one, okay. So this we know is there is a camera intrinsic parameter k, and these equations we did already. So I'm just I'm not going to again go. I'll just uh, I'll just write them, and not bother to explain because you know what these things are, zero zero one zero, and then you have this point in the 3D world which coordinates x1, y1, z1, 1, right. And we are saying that after you actually rotate the camera, then the coordinates become some, okay, now this should be small. So, we have like this x2, y2, 1 and then you have uh, k 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Then you can have x2, y2, z2, 1. Okay, this we know. So, now uh, we also know that, that we can actually relate the 2 through. So, x2, y2, z2, 1, we know right, this is all we wrote earlier also. This we can relate as r. And then T, of course, in this case, since we are not translating, see, I mean, if you if you try to go back, right, we had a T here, okay, and then we had written a 0 and then a 1 here, right, if you remember. And this is how you can come from x1, y1, z1, okay, you can, you can relate these two. But right now, we know that this T is 0, right, because, because we are not translating. So, we will just keep this as 0, okay, which is, a, which is a 3 cross 1 vector. That is your Txt by Tz, right, the translation of the camera, which is not going to happen in this case. And uh, therefore, right, we can go back. And uh, so, if you if you come, if you kind of, if you use the fact that x2, y2, z2, 1 in turn, right, is this, then you can relate the z2 times x2, y2, 1 to be equal to k times. And then again, if you multiply this matrix with this, then you will end up with what we had earlier, except that we'll write, uh, we'll write it in terms of a, a you know, sort of a compartment, right, r. And then here, this will be a 0 vector. Earlier, you had a translation there. Now that is a zero vector, and then you have x1, y1, z1, 1. Okay, and uh, this this I can in turn write this as k times k into r into x1, where again uh, where x1 is again simply x1, y1, z1. So all this right we did earlier. Okay, at that time you had r x plus t coming out. Now now there is no t. Right, t is simply zero. So x1, y1, z1. Okay, no, no, no one there. Just you know, it has only see three elements, right? And then we also, and then we also know, right? This is something again that we saw when we did the planar homography. So and then, right? We know that. We also know this. Uh, so your x one, right? Which is x one y one z one. Right? We know that this is related to, to the image coordinates as k inverse. 
x1, y1, z1, k inverse, okay, z1, x1, yeah, okay, now we get my little x2, z1, y1, z1, z1, okay. And this again I had explained last time that you cannot get a depth directly, right, from simply an image coordinate, you cannot do this inverse. But here we are assuming that z1 is known, so we, so we can do all this. Therefore, like all this, you just go back, okay. If you, have, if you have any doubts, just go back and check what we had done earlier. And then what we have is z2, therefore x2, y2, 1. Now we can now replace this as r times x1, right. So, so we had k, r, and then we had, we had our x1 guy. So, k, r, so x1 is now k inverse. And then you have, let us say, z1. You can pull out z1 if you wish. And then we have x1, y1, 1. And therefore, right again, we end up with this equation as lambda x2, y2, 1 is equal to k r k inverse, right, into x1, y1, 1, okay. And again, I mean, all of that holds. So, again, right, this is up to, so this is your, this is your rotational homography, so rotational homography. And, and as you can see, because there was no translation, Right, I didn't have to uh, write. I mean, no, nowhere did I have to assume that that it's a planar surface or anything. Right? I didn't make any such any such assumptions, and uh, and right, and I kind of said, did this for some arbitrary point p. Right, so the same thing holds for holds for at right, any point, and uh, we are mainly right. We did not make say, any any assumptions on the scene, so no assumptions on the scene. So what this also means is that, and you know what? It's actually, it is a, it should be obvious to us because. Right, only when you move, okay, there is supposed to be a parallax. If you don't move, right, you don't uh, see the parallax at all. So if you're just sitting there and you're not translating and simply say rotating and doing something like that without moving from the center, that means there's no parallax. And therefore, even if the world is 3D, right, it shouldn't really matter. Okay, that is also the reason why, uh, why let's say the, the you know, right, human eyes are the way they are. It's not like one overlapping on top of the other, right? There, there is a separation. And the separation is the one which actually tells you that something in the front, right, and something, anyway, stereo is something that, that I'll at least introduce you to you, introduce to you sometime later. But the whole idea is that uh, when you translate, you have a depth information coming in, right. But then it can also be an issue for you, right, because I mean, if the scene is 3D, if it's a planar scene, then it's okay. Planar scene, we can handle even if you translate. But then if the scene is full 3D, right, has, let's say, multiple planes and all of that, then we know that you know, it's no longer easy to handle. But then what, uh, like they say, right, there's no, there's no free lunch, right. So if you, if you, if you actually move, then uh, on the one hand, there is a problem because of the motion. You may not be able to work with all kinds of scenes. You have to restrict yourself to planar scenes. But then what you're losing out is the fact that the parallax effect, right, if it was a 3D world, it will bring the parallax effect to you. But then, right, you don't want it now, right. You, you're saying that, oh, I can't handle it. Whereas that is exactly the one that our eyes and all use. In fact, every stereo camera uses that effect only to, to its advantage. So, so it all, it, it's all a function of what situation we are in. So as long as we are, we are in the situation where you want to, where you want to, do, want, want to kind of, you know, find out computer homography that will relate images in the simplest form, right? That would typically mean that you either restrict the scene to be, seen to be a planar, in which case your, in, in which case your camera can have a general motion or or you, or you, or you kind of allow the scene to be general, the sense that the scene can be three D. But now you say that the camera itself cannot now do whatever it likes. It can only kind of say, it can, it can only do a rotation. It cannot, it cannot translate. Right. So you have these, you have these two, two kind of, two kind of, it's a kind of a dichotomy. Right? Either, you, either you put a constraint on the scene, or you actually put a constraint on the, on the camera motion. Right. So either way, in both cases, you can actually work with homography. So the only thing is, only you kind of take home is that. Uh, you know, it is not true that if there is a 3D world, you cannot perform homographies. You can still perform homographies provided you restrict the camera motion, right? Then you can still do, do stitching. Only thing is, right, I mean, you know, one wonders as to what will you get. So, it's like saying that I'm rotating like that. So, you'll still be able to stitch, but typically, it will be like to pan because that's when, but then there are, there are situations, right, where somebody might just want to do this, in which case, he can still stitch. He or she can still stitch and ray images together, huh? and irrespective of what the world looks like, it could be a complete 3D, full-blown 3D world. Right? It, it really will not matter. Okay. Now, one of the things right, that I wanted to do was introduce today, right? Kind of uh, so all all the while, what we are talking about is really a pinhole model, right? Till now, what we did was all a pinhole, and we all know that the the, the cameras that we carry with us are not really pinhole. 
they all have lens not just one lens they have compound lenses and so on right so the whole idea is that uh, how does this image formation then you know what happens right i mean you know, are there still ideas from let's say the the kind of pinhole model that you can still carry forward that are still valid you know when you introduce a lens and uh, the other thing is when you introduce a lens what changes will happen how does one you know interpret the image now also how does one you know interpret an image captured through a pinhole right? imagine that imagine that uh, that let's say right i mean i have i have a scene sitting out here and suppose i have actually a pinhole okay here and then i have a sensor hmm my my sensor plane is sitting here i see some image correct if it is a pinhole now sir so, so suppose assume that uh, that i have the ability to kind of introduce a lens here now okay suppose i suppose introduce a lens there okay where there is a pinhole okay now i would want to know what really will happen to these rays that are coming in how does my image formation change what will happen and so on right so so basically that will be the that will be the thing that will that that we will want to move on next to what is called a real aperture camera pinhole on the one hand is a kind of a, a very idealistic sort of a sort of a camera camera situation the other thing is really a real aperture by real aperture you mean that the aperture is not really a pinhole it's real in the sense that right it's it's a fair, you know it's, it's it's like it's like any aperture that you might want to have it's like a circular aperture through which you want you want light to come in right and then and then uh, and then that right, you have a lens that will then gather all that light and try to focus and so on okay but that is but then before that right i wanted to just uh, uh just kind of walk through this uh, this other slide uh, now that uh, that i just opened now let me just walk through you walk you through that 